This next video I'm extremely excited about. I had the good fortune of meeting Chris Jones uh, through Facebook. And Chris Jones is the owner of World's Worst Fishing. And he has a channel that's really geared toward educating people on how to do soft plastics. And that's where I went. That's where I, uh, you know, I was searching for more information about the world of soft plastics and, you know, what's the best soft plastic to use? Uh, you know, what what's the... Um, techniques for pouring different colors and things so uh, his channel is just chock full of good information on that and plus he's a lot of fun to watch so go check out world's worst fishing give him a sub give him a sub give him a sub he is the best soft plastic guy in the uh, the whole youtube world i think so anyway we got to talking a little bit he was sharing with me how to grow my channel I asked him if he would like to collaborate, and he said yes. So I thought, man, that's a perfect match because I love to come up with new lure ideas, make molds, all the things it takes to make the lure. And he is like the guru of soft plastics. Um, if you check out his uh, YouTube, you got to go back and look at some of his videos. He makes some beautiful swim baits. Uh, he makes one in particular that I just absolutely love. But anyway, <clears throat> on to the video. Um, I hope you enjoy. Oh, where did that little guy come from? Uh-oh. I think I see another lure coming on. Not now. Stay focused. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're cutting a uh, pattern out of an 8-inch gizzard shad. I'm going to make it a paddle tail. And what I'm doing here is basically I'm going to build this model by taking two separate pieces so I'll have a perfect parting line when I get done and you'll see what I'm doing here I'm just basically building the lure with two exact halves um, opposite halves by pinning them together with, with a dowel rod and a hole and so when I get ready to I can split the lure perfectly in half and this really makes it nice for molding so when it comes time for me to you know put in a uh, you know, half, the lure halfway into the clay so that I can pour the rubber around it. Well, basically all I'm going to have to do is separate the lure and divide it back in half. And then I can put it on a flat surface. And, well, you'll see as, as the video progresses. But that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. I'm creating a model of this 8-inch gizzard shad that's going to be um, dividable. I can separate it into two pieces. Okay, I've got to get a different kind of glue. I've tried spray adhesive and it's messy. This stuff here, it's not going to cut it. It gives me fits. Okay, that was painful. My paper peeled off in the middle of my cut, so I had to... That's usually the simplest part of the job. Okay, well, nevertheless, let's go. Now, I could have carved a lot of this down first. I uh, end up going straight to the sander because for one I needed to clean up the profile but then I just decided you know what it's a heavy enough grit paper this PVC wood really you know sands nicely so I decide you know what I'm just gonna shape the whole thing with the sander you know get it down to its basic shape. Yeah, wiggle 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 wiggle. <laughs> okay I'm watching rabbits fight. I gotta get busy. Let's get this bad boy whittled down. Okay, I should have been a little more cautious. You see that hole right there? That's because I drilled my hole a little too deep. And so when I, I got sanded down and carved down to the size, the thickness I wanted it at the tail, that hole showed. But it's no big deal. I'll just go back later and fill it with some Bondo. Get her, get her patched up. I wish I could actually whittle and sand that fast. Be like the six million dollar man for you older guys. You remember him. <laughs> Here I'm just basically cutting out the uh, details that I'm going to trace onto the head, the gill pattern, the eye socket. All that, all that good stuff. Oh, 
Okay, we got him all sanded up and got the uh, details drawn on, getting ready to carve and grinded out some eye sockets. Let's carve some gill plates. Yeah, I just love carving this stuff. This white wood is so easy to carve. It's so much, uh, it's so evenly, it's so even. Uh, well, I wanna, how I want to say that? It's so um, consistent. It's not like wood where you have, you know, grains and stuff to deal with, variations. It has a consistency and it's just hard enough where you can actually make lures out of it. It'll hold, you know, hold hooks in, hold hook eyes and hook hangers and stuff in it. But uh, soft enough where you can sand and carve it pretty easy. So. You should pick yourself up some of this. And one thing I I, uh, I notice about carvers is is that um, once you've carved, say like gill plates for instance, once you've carved them, you kind of uh, you kind of get into what's called the flow state. You basically you know how those gills go. And so, you know, it's just like with me, I'll, I'll cut these lines and then I'll come back and cut in and relieve it so that it's up. But the gill plates actually have radiuses. You know, there, there's a gentle slope on each plate. And so I'll work that both directions. I'll cut from this angle and, and this will be showing, but then I'll taper that back down too. And if you study the gills, you'll see some small details where the the gill plate might have a double line on the edge or something. But you know, those features, they really help add some character to your bait and uh, give it some realistic look. I think I'll upgrade the eye. Let me go to this size right here. I think that looks a lot better. You know, I like using the Dremel tool versus drilling. I watch a lot of guys carve baits, and most of them will take a drill bit and drill in. Um, when I'm using the white wood especially, uh, I can hold that lure in my hand and just, you know, gently work that, that grinding bit in there and create that circle that I've got marked a whole lot easier. Something along the lines, what I'm thinking is I'm going to build this paddle tail that I, I'm going to be able to split when I make the mold. So I'm going to be gluing it on, cutting the shape out, and then filling it with Bondo. So let's rough him up. Glue him on. Rough him up. Give him a little knuckle sandwich. You don't hear that much anymore, do you? Remember that? We are kids. You want a knuckle sandwich? Could be some good stuff anyway. Just because time's always changing. And what I'm using here is Lexan <coughs> polycarbonate. And it's like 40 thousandths thick. It's um, you know, easy to work with. I can cut it with scissors. It's thin enough I can cut it with scissors and it super glues real well. You can use cyanacrylate on it. So that's what I'm using as my kind of my scaffold to build this paddle tail. And as far as me choosing the size that this paddle tail is going to be, it's really from just feel. I'm studying other baits. I'm looking at the thickness and the size of this bait. I'm just kind of uh, just going with what feels right. And it's amazing how if you spend time making lures and doing this kind of stuff you, you basically will pick up on what it takes to get a lure to do what you want it to do. So um, you know if you're going to make something like this I recommend you study paddle tail baits and see how 
you know, how big is the tail in proportion to the body? That kind of thing. And then just putty him up. <laughs> A couple observations about paddle tails is, you know, I've made them before and I've made the actual boot part too thin. It doesn't have any mass, so it doesn't really waggle good. It doesn't wiggle the bait. And the second thing is, I've made the tail too thick. You gotta have the tail thin. Okay, let's do some, uh, we got that, got a sweet looking tail on it. Let's see if we can't get a dorsal fin and some pectoral fins. Alright, here we go. Here I've just got me a piece of PVC board with a couple holes drilled in it to match so that I can create a flat surface. Okay, I got a shape here that uh, I need that so that when I build these dorsal fins, I can basically um, uh, they're going to be dividable too. So I'm taking two of those forty thousandths thick pieces of Lexan, and I'm making two of them. And each one has to be seated into my part so that it's flush. So what I'll do here is I'll take a Dremel tool and kind of grind that out and set that one side in and put it on this board and make sure it's flush. You know, when I push down on it with some glue, that makes sure that those two surfaces line up nicely. And then, of course, I'll do the other half the same way. And then when I put it together, it'll be 80 thousandths thick. Oh, crap. Did you see that? I just sucked up the part I just spent 20 minutes making. Okay, here I'm basically doing the same thing with the anal fin making two separate ones using that flat surface to push them down evenly and putting a little you know cyanacrylate in there what okay let's make some pecs give this bad boy some pecs i think that's a little too small i'm gonna go a little bigger okay with the pectoral fins i'll do something a little different i'm not going to actually have two pieces it's just one but I will build it up with Bondo because if you end up with too small pockets for your fins and your mold, the rubber won't fill, or it will fill and it'll tear coming out. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, um, let's build a couple of those bad boys. Okay, what I do here is I take that same Lexan polycarbonate and I cut it into the shape of a pectoral fin and I coat it with Bondo and then I carve the actual rays of the fin into it. Then I basically take some more Bondo, stick on the back of it, and glue it on. I know, I know, you're saying, why is he taking them off? Well, I gotta put the scales on. And that's gonna be too hard to try to work the scales around them fins. So I got the cart in front of the horse a little bit there. Basically what I've done here is made a scaling jig. I just take a little catalog, and some blue tape, and tape down some of that copper mesh um, over top of a piece of foil tape. And then take a dial rod and something heavy, like a jaw of a vise, and roll it back and forth until I impress those scales into that foil. And actually the tape ends up not being quite wide enough to cover the entire lure but it's going to have to do that's as wide as i have i used to have some wider stuff but it ran out dag nibbit and here i just basically made me a little tool from soft copper to burnish the the foil down okay we got him all foiled up and it's time to put the pectoral fins back on <coughs> they're going to glue on something like that oh yeah Big old eight inch gizzard down there mulling around, bumping into rocks. Okay, now it's time to draw every one of these scales in there, nice and firm. 
this is a great way to get some real good definition on your scales. The mesh is nice, but this will really make them pop. You gotta get my better side. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get some lighting. So, will you whittling lures? Potatoes, honey. I'm making a roast for my brother and his wife. Uh, okay, well, sure wish I could whittle that good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got him all put together. It's uh, two pieces. Um, what I'll be able to do now is take and mount that to a flat surface, like so. I'll be able to take the, uh, I'm not even sure if I need a spot. But yeah, I'll take just a spot of super glue at each end, a little bit, a little bit of cyanacrylate, and uh, so when I pour that rubber over there, I'm going to take this off and pull this off. Then I can just take this and stick it on the other side of the lure while it's in the rubber. And of course grease it up good and pour the other half and I'll have a real nice flat parting line. And that's pretty critical for getting good, uh, a good seal on your mold to have a good, a good parting line. So there's where we're at. I'll add one more, just for goodness sake. Now this is one handy tool right here. This is a tool that I built, I call the multi-tool. It's, I took an old uh, Luan door and I cut holes in it, um, square holes, and put metal plates in those square holes and then attached power tools to it. So at this end, I've got a jigsaw in there and it's basically just a jigsaw upside down uh, screwed to a, a metal plate. I took the stock plate off and just screwed the, <laughs> screwed the actual jigsaw to the metal plate. And then at the other side I've got uh, a router and it's done the same way. And in the middle I've got my power saw, my circular saw. So I've got a saw, a jigsaw, and a router all on one table. It works out so nice to just go around the horn. Next thing I do here is to install a little piece of piano hinge. Yeah, because what was what I, uh, my son showed me that we can do is we can. Um, it would be at the edge of the screen, but we could zoom in on it and recenter it. So, um, yeah, I was, I was tickled to death. Uh, so there's about seven minutes of top water blow ups. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And you can see the fish and everything? Or? Well, in one particular one, you can. You can actually see the fish. You know, it's, it's not real clear, but you can just tell that's a fish, you know. But. A lot of them are just, you know, white water. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. That's yeah. really, really hoping you got with the top water stuff. I don't care about me. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I felt a little bit sheepish. I was like, you know, here you are fighting a fish, and I'm, I keep watching my lure. <laughs> I was afraid I'd miss a big, you know, all-time best blow-up or something. And, I can say that'll never change. You keep... <laughs> you know the the injector will come in here and fill all this up so you'll have a nice big thick um, blob of uh, plastisol for it to draw to as it shrinks at least that's the game plan now the phone call you just listened to was in regards to the video how to carve a topwater lure if you've not seen that, you need to go see it and see what that top water is about. A nice fit there. So now I can take this and mount this on here. So let's put the difference a little bit and come off there. Somewhere along right there. But uh, yeah, so like right in there.
Oh, look at that. I had a lot of underbleed. It came loose on me. Hmm. Oh, well. We can trim that back. Yeah, we can sure trim that back. Got this guy all glued together. And uh, even took some Bondo and filled some of the places it didn't want to come together. But it's all ready to insert back into the mold. <laughs> Make sure there's no dust. Now, I highly recommend that you don't ever pull the part out of the rubber, but uh, because I had some underbleed, I had to I had to pull it out and clean up the mold a little bit, and then uh, glue the part together and stick it back in there. But I would highly recommend leaving the part in there. If you can glue the other half to it, and you won't have the issue of it possibly not going back in. I've had parts where I just couldn't quite get them back in. And nothing, I mean nothing, on this planet will frustrate you any more than to get this far and you screw up the mold. I'll make the insert from this scratch here. Pour a little polyurethane resin in there. Okay, here basically what I'm doing is taking that, you know, basically head of the lure and just carving it down. I want to take it down about, well, about 3 sixteenths of an inch all over the place so that it'll have a good coat of rubber around it. Okay, I ended up taking off too much and it's just a little bit too short. So I add some Bondo and um, build it back up. And then, of course, sand it down. But one of the little tricks I do with the Bondo, you'll see here, is I take my makeup brush and put some of those micro balloons on it. And then I can take my finger and smooth it before it even, you know, sets up so that I don't have so much sanding to do. Okay, here I'm basically just sizing it up, making sure it looks like it's got plenty of clearance all the way around it. And I think that's going to work. So I don't show it here, but I make a mold just like I did of the body. I make it for the insert, and I build a little jig and make the wires and pour some lead on it. And if you all would like, maybe someday I could do a video on that. Okay, I have to pour one of these just to see if the mold's going to work before I send it off to Chris at World's Worst Fishing. He just did some, some tilapia swim baits. It looks so good. Okay. okay, I hated to do that to you. That's not right, is it? <laughs> well, I didn't have a choice because I didn't finish it. I sent the mold on, on, on over to World's Worst Fishing, Chris Jones. He's down in Florida. And guess what? He finished it. And he is really good at this stuff. So... Tune in to his channel right now. Go to World's Worst Fishing. I'll put the link in the description. And click on there. And you and I both will go there and watch this. Because I've not seen it yet either. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. We'll go find out how this thing turned out. And while you're there, give him a sub. Subscribe to his channel. You won't be disappointed. Because I'm telling you, he's, he's a very talented individual. He's so good at what he does. He's an expert in his field. But he's also creative and comes up with all these cool ideas. He, he did a uh, stars and stripes of a worm and a creature bait. And, I mean, it's a lot of work, but it looked beautiful. And uh, so you never know from week to week what he's going to come up with next. So tune in to his channel. Check out what he does. I think you'll enjoy subscribing to his channel. And also, remember, if you didn't hit that like button, hit that like button. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And don't forget to lure up.